there guys, it's Joey. Welcome back to my series I Can't Witch Without. This series is discussing items I regularly use in my witchy practice. As always, a disclaimer, this is not to say you need one or any of these items to be a witch. It's just components that I use regularly in my practice. Talking a little bit about the correspondences, we always start from the books as a jumping off point. And then discussing my feelings, the energies I pick up on it and my uses for whichever item it is. So apologies for being a little bit late this week. I've had a sick partner, which means nothing gets done. I don't know about anyone else, but sick man means everything grinds to a standstill. Uh, apart from the incredible gifts that Ange sent, because I really wanted to make a thank you video and express my gratitude because it was overwhelmed by it. And of course the Morrigan video, because Morrigan waits for no man or no woman, sick or not. <laughs> so today's video is I Can't Witch Without Red Sandalwood. So we're going to start with the books as always, and we start with Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. And if you don't know what it looks like, I'd be surprised, but there you go, that's Cunningham's Book, and he has very little to say on the subject, unfortunately. Gender, feminine, planet, Venus, element, water, powers, love, magical uses, red sandalwood is burned to bring love. It is sprinkled in areas that need to be cleansed of negativity. And that's it from him. Now, if you can afford to, I really suggest getting the Compendium of Herbal Magic by Paul Barrel. He's actually done another one and I, I'm going to have a look into that because it does reference it in here. His other one is the Master Book of Herbalism and I'm going to have a look whether that's worth investing in, in probably for you all present, but I shall have a look. Anyway, from his book, <clears throat> Jupiter, Funeral Herb, Herb of Consecration, Herb of Immortality, Magical Herb, Religious Herb, Visionary Herb. Invocational to Venus. Law. In some parts of Asia, sandalwood is used both in embalming the physical body and in assisting the spiritual body into its next life. The wood is sometimes considered sacred and used in the construction of temples. The great spiritual teacher Maharava, or Mahavira, probably Mahavira, one of the Jain, oh goodness, <laughs> one of the Jain. Tirthamkaras, or great sages, according to Laros World Mythology, or Laros is probably Laros, according to Laros World Mythology, is said to have been showered with great gifts at his birth, including gold and silver, pearls, diamonds, nectar, and sandalwood. Followers of the Jain Lord Bahubali worship at a huge over 60 feet tall statue of the nude spiritual teacher. <laughs> Every 12 years a festival is celebrated, determined astrologically, at which the statue is bathed, then anointed with the juice of sugar cane milk and then sandalwood. Uses. Sandalwood has stirred both imaginations and spiritual aspirations for centuries. In modern times, sandalwood is associated with the goddess Venus and also with the Empress card of tarot. A most sacred herb in Jainism, Jainism, I think it's Jainism, sandalwood is widely used today as a religious herb. It is commonly used to assist with meditation, trance work and all forms of divination as it calms the mind and helps one remain spiritually focused. It is also most valuable in rituals of death and dying. Many gems have become associated with sandalwood, including diamonds, emeralds, pearls and turquoise. Sandalwood is recommended for use when consecrating altar cloths and is said to be associated with hod on the tree of life. Magically, this herb is used to increase opportunities and assist in achieving success in life. Interestingly enough, he doesn't talk about love at all. So that's interesting. There you go. We have some different perspectives on love. And I think sandalwood really is one of those herbs which has evolved over time, even within our lifetime, within how we interact with it, how we view it, how we see it. And I think 
sandalwood along with patchouli is one of those herbs which people often sort of associate as being a hippie herb, a new age herb, um, you know, hippies smelling of patchouli and sandalwood type of thing. And I'd heard that stereotype when I was young, you know, so prejudices even creep into this sort of thing and sort of negative connotations creep into it. Why negative things are associated with hippies or the herbs is beyond me. But there you go. <clears throat> I guess that's a whole other video. <laughs> Let's not get into it. Okay, so for me red sandalwood has been around since the very beginning of my practice. It's a very easily accessible herb. And in shot we have three examples, not by all means the only examples, of sandalwood, red sandalwood in particular with the herb that you can get hold of. There is white sandalwood which I was looking for for a while back but it seems to be rarer and more expensive so. In shot we have the hem sandalwood stick incense, the red sandalwood bark herb itself and sandalwood essential oil. I had problems getting hold of a sandalwood incense that I like. I've had two. I had one gifted to me and this that I found actually in Tesco in the Asian beauty section. And I panicked last week because it had all gone, but uh, they've they've got this the incense back <laughs> and but nothing else. Hair products and the incense back at the minute. So <laughs> I really hope they bring the rose water back because it was such a, a good price. But this is actually a really reasonable price in Tesco right now and it's, it's 70p for a box of 20 sticks and usually in England you will pay £1.50 for a box of 20 sticks particularly if it's a brand such as Hem. However this brand is beautiful, it smells gorgeous, it's fantastic and I love it in offering. I love using this stick incense as an offering to the gods. I think it has that sacred energy. I think it's, it does have that very, very cleansing property. And for me, first and foremost, red sandalwood is usually my go-to bark for purification in sacred spaces, particularly. But it's really, really good for forcefully clearing out anything. Now, if you mix it with chili pepper you have a very basic and very effective forceful get out commanding cleanser and to be honest it should be used sparingly because you burn it on a charcoal disc and chili peppers are the worst for getting in your nose getting it in your throat it you know really making your eyes water so you need to use it sparingly and very little chili pepper in your ratio the incense that I actually have and was sent by a friend very early on in my practice uh, when I was having problems was called Queen Bitch of the Whole Damn Universe, only the swearing in it rather than damn. And it basically is a real punch and forcefully commands and gets rid of negative energies, negative spirits and entities, anything. It just cleans it out. It's just like, nope punch and it really it really has that kick. I'm going to go grab the book for the essential oil and just check if there's any different meanings to the essential oil just so we've got that and by the power of editing you won't even notice. Okie dokie so essential oils the spiritual properties of sandalwood essential oil is harmony peace serenity and unity the magical properties given our healing protection and spirituality. Sandalwood essential oil encourages us, us to form a deeper meditative state that helps us link to the spiritual self. It brings us unity to help us connect with humanity. It has been used from the earliest times in spiritual practices. It is one of the angelic fragrances. Sandalwood essential oil assists in the joining of the physical and spiritual realms, the reaching beyond ourselves into the universal whole. It's useful for those who cannot visualise the connection between the conception of the universe and the conception of humankind. Mix sandalwood essential oil with lavender essential oil 
for a bodily perfume for healing and protection. Mix it with frankincense essential oil to bring spiritual vibrations to your full moon rituals. So there you go. And that's from the Malden Family One World Press Aromatherapy. I can't read. Apparently my brain is just like... Bleh, 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 bleh. And back to the video. <laughs> okay. So the essential oil has very interlinking but slightly separate energies to the other two. And it's perhaps because the essential oil is easier to use in a sort of more soluble water-based form, whereas the other two tend to get burnt in the, you know, the fiery release, fire and air form. So for the essential oil, you can use it like a perfume, you can use it in your diffuser, you can add it to other things, herbal blends, oils, etc. And you can use it for healing and spirituality. And if you are having like a spiritual crisis, a, a lost faith, a feeling blocked, feeling lost, then this is something you could utilize in that regard and help if it were me i would suggest diffuser which is where you put a few drops in water on like an oil burner with your tea light underneath and help that diffuse around and just take some deep inhaling breaths of of the sandalwood essential oil i would use it sparingly unless you really like sandalwood i'm on the fence about the essential oil i'm a bit like Nye. and a lot of the incenses i'm a little bit stick incenses i'm a little bit new i love the raw herb bark especially in incenses I think it smells incredible and it has an incredible cleansing purification energy which I just adore it's fantastic in terms of turning your space into a, a temple by which I mean creating sacred space within your own home or a space which you need to set up as a, as a temporary temple I guess temporary sacred space and it really helps sort of shift your awareness through scent and your vibrational level, your energy. So if you really need to sort of, I don't know, de-plug from your home life as you are setting up sacred space and creating a, a place of magic and you, you need to zone out from it being, a, you know, your home where you cook and clean and mirror, mirror and you need it to become a sacred place where you do magic or you worship at your altar or you do spells or meditate or commune with deity or whatever you may or may not be doing divination and you're not so good at sort of unplugging yourself from that you're not practiced perhaps so sandalwood can really help you shift gears change your vibrational energy and sort of key in on what it is you want to do especially if you have a difficult time with, say, meditation and, and changing your energy levels. With practice, that becomes easier, uh, and later on in, in your witchy path, it, it may be easy for, for you to do that. However, even if it is, sandalwood can just be one of those instant click things once you've got, gotten used to it. It sort of triggers that, that feeling, that memory, and it helps you key into your spiritual self a little bit more, perhaps. It's just a suggestion, as all these things are. So, I've used it for that purpose. I've used it for helping create sacred space. I've used it for offering to the Morrigan, in fact, and creating a spiritual area, a spiritual cleansed space. But possibly my most personal feeling on it which I don't know if you see it anywhere else or not I don't think you do I associate it with the mother aspect of the Morrigan which given as Macha for simplicity's sake and that's interesting for me because there is that element of associating it with death which you know, some people will be like, oh no, it's a crone, because, you know, because of that death element. But to be honest, all elements are present within all goddesses of the Morrigan. 
Apologies, telephone. <laughs> oh, men. Right, okay. So I was talking about the fact that I use this herb bark for the goddess Macha or the mother aspect, the mother element of the goddess Morrigan. And I think you can tie it into any mother goddess. So for me, the element of death and rebirth and life is present in all aspects of the goddess Morrigan, in all maiden mother crone, and those are only simplistic terms anyway. And as a result, I think it's very limiting to say, you know, just because this has a death element in some cultures, we should only apply it to crone energy. And you can apply it to crone energy, fine. But for me, it has much more of the goddess Maka in it. And the reason for, for me is because it has a strong commanding element to it, as well as the colour, of course, but we'll talk about the colour in a minute. So sandalwood has that strong warrior commanding essence. It's forceful in the way that it cleanses. It doesn't take no for an answer, basically. And that's very much reminiscent of the energies of Maka, of, of warlike Maka, of the go basically the goddess of the Red Mare. And it does have a really odd almost horsey energy. Now, it may be its association with Jupiter because of that sort of commanding element, you know, that legal element, that justice, that sort of thing. And on the other hand, you see, it's supposed to be a little bit more watery. It's supposed to be associated more with water and Venus and, and love, and that's where the love element comes in. But for me, Maka is also a lover and a fighter, you know? She's the mother element, so she, of course she's the lover. She has her sensual, sexual, fiery side, and that ties into emotions and love and that energy, as well as that commanding warrior energy. So for me, red sandalwood kind of has this duality that I think is present within all of the Morrigan, but also within Maha. It has that lustful, sexual, in love, emotional side that, that mothers have, but it also has this kick-ass element, this I will not stand for negativity, I will not stand for this, no, 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 cleanse, 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 oomph, oomph, oomph. And it kind of boosts everything around it as well. I think it does, and you won't read that in a lot of the books. I think sandalwood really does complement a lot of other herbs. Quite frequently when you add it to herbal blends and things, you will find that it enhances the scent, it makes it more uplifting, it makes it more powerful in a similar fashion, but not the same, to dragon's blood resin. And for me, it just has that sort of kick to it. And it's not, by all accounts, given in the book to be an energising herb, but or bark in this case. But for me, it does. I, I, I honestly have found that through all of my dealings. I find it's fantastic to give to, to Maka and use in her offerings and things. It has this sort of... Now, this is a little bit morbid. But it reminds me a little bit of if you were walking through a battlefield and they, they, you know, they were throwing um, straw or bark down to soak up the blood. And I know that's a, it's a teensy bit morbid there, I know, but that's the energy that it kind of reminds me of. It has that element of, and that draws in, of course, as well, the, the element of water and things and the battlefield so that's kind of soaking up. Um, liquid and also the battlefield energy. So for me personally it has that, it has that duality, it has that multitude of uses. And I think lastly we'll just touch on the fact that you can use it in love and lust magic. It's, it's kind of more forceful though and you have to be careful I think in, in in love magic. 
So if you were going for a roundabout kind of, I really need some love in my life right now, and, and you just did it in a, in a vague way, I think you would be perfectly sound, basically, to, to do that with sandalwood. I wouldn't recommend forcefully trying to make anybody love you. Um, if it works, then you've always got that doubt in your head, and I don't think it would likely work anyway, personally. I've never seen that happen, I think that's just one of those fear tales, but um, as in terms of doing that with sandalwood I think you'd have a, a problematic time anyway because of its cleansing property. So if you were trying to, you know, forcefully force anybody into something, it would also be cleansing itself of that at the same time, quite likely. <laughs> but it does have a really beautiful lust energy, a beautiful sensuality energy, and it can really add uh, pep to existing relationships and things of that nature. It ties into the whole why shouldn't a mother still be sensual energy and why shouldn't a mother still have her sexual drive. And that's something which some people, for some reason, have take issue with and perhaps it's a good herb for working through those issues with. So that's going to be it for this video. Apologies for the phone call interruption. Many blessings.